Cancer. Thanks for showing up to watch this video. This is a love reading for the month of October for Cancer. Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. I personally recommend though that you watch for your moon sign and if you don't know your moon sign there's a link in the description box below. So we'll just get started. So what can you expect in the month of October in your romantic relationship? How will you see yourself this month within the context of this relationship? So one this is kind of a common theme, and I don't know how many of you follow on Facebook. Today is the 27th of September. So um, today was actually a day where I shared a good article about all of these transitions and things that are happening in our relationships based on astrological shit from this year, because there's been a lot of it. Let's be real here. Um, anyway, I would recommend that you check that out because I can already see that it's pretty relevant to your situation <laughs> with the first three cards. Okay, so here we go. Now, the way that you might be feeling within your relationship is like maybe it's not everything that you ever hoped for, right? But you're not gonna leave. And you're not gonna talk about it. Now that makes some good sense because you have to kind of go within and make sure this is what you want. Like, I don't wanna make decisions that are going to be life altering if I'm not sure that this is what I want, maybe I'm in a mood, right? They say that cancers are moody. I don't know that that's actually the case, but you know, you want to just really, really evaluate it. So these are some thoughts that you're having. Now, how is your partner viewing you? They don't see you as deceptive or anything like that. They actually see you as being a really good, clear communicator. Um, but they do see that you're coming to this point where you're going to make some big decisions about the relationship. Now, whoa. Now, they're not really concerned that things are going to change, but it's like they're kind of wondering what's going on in your head. Now, if you're really clear, you could go ahead and share that, right? But I think this is a process in the month of October for you to get really clear on your relationship. So what should you be avoiding this month? And they say, um, you know, new exciting ideas. So like infidelity would be a big thing to avoid this month. Um, it's not necessarily something that you should always avoid in relationships. Personally, I'm a Leo, so I am I'm a Leo Scorpio moon. So I am severely loyal. Like I just couldn't. Right. But, um, that's not the case for some people. Some people are in polyamorous relationships and that works just fine for them and, and good for them, no judgment. But, but this month you want to just kind of avoid that because it's only going to add more confusion for you. You know, even if both of you are okay with that is basically what I'm trying to say. Because we're trying to stay in this place of emotional balance, but like also having a really strong hold or... Um, or idea of what's going on in reality, right? Like our mind and our heart, super balanced. And it's almost like eerily, like kind of scary clear. And so on the one hand, you know, the unfortunate side of that, of having that clarity, is that it is going to bring up a little bit of fear for us and make us maybe feel like hopeless. Um, making us feel kind of like, oh, is this really what I want? Is this going to work? But for those of you, because this is a general reading, it's not going to apply to every single cancer in a relationship on the planet. Um, the best way to, you know, really find out is a personal reading, whether it's me or somebody else that you trust. But what I'm saying here is that um, for those of you who are questioning this, and it feels like the majority of you are doing that because what is that thing that they say? Like, men marry women. And I don't know what they say in gay relationships. But they say, men marry women, hoping they never change. Women marry men, hoping to change them, right? And so, if you're in the party that it was hoping, you know, to really, like, embrace, especially as a cancer, like a water sign, like an empath, you're hoping to embrace this person, right? Because you see the light in them. You see their potential. You know, they're functioning about here, but you see that they could be functioning here. And you're like, I'm just going to hold your hand and I'm going to get you up there. And you know, like, this is going to be great. And we're so in love and I'm going to, but you can't do that unless they want to. That's the whole problem here. And some of you are starting to lose hope that you could actually change them or help them, that sort of a thing. And so it's starting to defeat you, right? You're starting to realize that this person is 
Here was your vibration, right? You're trying to drag them up there with you, but as a result, they're heavy and they're dragging you down. And so it's not for your highest good. And some of you are getting real clear on that this month. Um, so what should you be avoiding in your relationship? Feeling weak. Feeling like you can't conquer this, like that you can't figure it out, that you know, you're not emotionally um, ready, that you're not smart enough, that you're not, you know, whatever, because you are. Um, it's saying you don't have to make any decisions this month. You definitely don't, um, especially if they're challenging because you know that you might not be up to the challenge. That's okay. Um, but you do have to like kind of realize your own strength. You have to avoid this feeling of weakness, of getting down on yourself because it seems like it's not so much about you. It is going to come down to you making a decision, but the month of October is not necessarily the month to make the decision. It's the month to think it through. Does that make sense? Okay. So what could you do in order to grow or increase um, the love in this relationship? Now, this one flew right out of the deck as a challenge, okay? Now, the Eight of Cups is talking about coming from this place where it's like, I love a person a lot, okay? I love them eight cups. That's a lot of cups, right? And I want 10 cups, though. I want that dream. I want the happily ever after that I ever always envisioned. Now, knowing that that's really hard to find, I'm wondering... Should I go out and try to find it or should I say this is good enough? And they're saying that's the challenge for you this month, okay? But for you to really think about it, to assess, like, is eight cups going to be good enough? Like, if I'm not happy now and I'm only 30 years old, like, what is it going to be like when I'm 50 if they don't change, right? And so these are the kinds of questions we want to ask ourselves. We need to challenge ourselves to um, kind of go within and figure out, okay? So they're like... Mix things up a little bit. Don't get comfortable in the same old, same old, same old. Because maybe that's okay right now because it helps you function on a day-to-day -day level. But in the longer term, is it what you want? They say right now, it might be a little bit less about your partner and it could be outside circumstances that are causing strain and stress in the relationship. It's not that they're, you know, not good enough and things like that. But these are other things that we need to look at. Like, is it just the circumstance? Because... The Wheel of Fortune in reverse is like, okay, well, you know what? Our luck is going to change. At some point, we're going to be at the top of our game. Right now, we might not be there. there my sister actually is a Cancer. She, I don't know if she's coupled or single right now, actually, but um, she had this kind of an energy just last week. She was bit by a cat she was trying to rescue from the mouth of a husky, and um in that process, her hands got really infected. She had to have surgery. She missed a bunch of work. She's a hairstylist, so like she needs her hands. She can't type, she can't do anything. So um, that would be a circumstance that would definitely cause strain in a relationship because now there's financial strain, right? There's just the stress of um, not really knowing what to do with yourself, having all this time to overthink things. Then on top of that, you know, there's, um, the emotional toll, all that stuff. And so they're like, don't avoid thinking about things, but it is okay to not make a decision right now. And that's actually the best thing for your relationship until you have entire clarity. But you do want to kind of monkey around with things. You don't want things to just be the same old, same old, same old. Try different things in your relationship and see if that makes them better or worse because that's going to be a good gauge for you as to whether or not this is what you want now and forever, or if it's something you just want for right now. Does that make sense? Okay. So what is working in your favor in the month of October in regards to your relationship? That it's fun, that there's a lot of joy, that you're actually good friends. That's a good thing. And that you're actually super emotionally balanced, that your head and your heart are super balanced this month. That's a good thing for you. Like you, you're very much a realist. You see things as they are. Now, um, if you if you are in that party who does identify this as like totally hopeless, at least at least you understand it on both levels, right? You're not crazy. Um, what's working against you? 
that you're not using the law of attraction to its fullest capacity, first of all. Um, monitoring your thoughts and your speech is going to be very, very important because the more affirmations you can make for happiness, joy, creativity, fun, excitement, um, the better in this relationship, okay? Um, so this card is a card about, you know, there's a lot of joy in being vulnerable, in, um, you know, being completely naked, but like, you know, which is vulnerability. And he's riding this horse bareback. There's no saddle, but horses are stable, but it's a little less stable because of that. And you're just going forward with passion anyway, because there's joy. If that's the case for you in your relationship, um, then good. But if this is what you want and you're not making that declaration, that's not, you're not really helping yourself. So if, if you could ask for, um, you know, increased joy, happiness, fun, excitement in your relationship, deeper bonds, that would be good. Or if you're trying to manifest that um, elsewhere or just in general, and then maybe it comes from your partner, maybe it comes from elsewhere, um, that would be a good, good thing for you, okay? <clears throat> so what are the lessons that you are learning in the month of October in your relationship? <sighs> I think Scorpio just had this too. There's this lesson of needing to learn. It's not that you're disrespectful to your partner, okay? But we need to learn respect in a different way. To understand that maybe their ideas, even though they're different than yours, um, are still valid, right? So you could be totally right about a situation, but they could also be totally right too because everybody has their own truth and that's kind of the lesson that we're learning. And then the other thing, spontaneity, because we do have that need for joy, um, excitement kind of a thing. This would be a good relationship bonder. Like if you go and try to do something new and exciting, especially with that sun card and stuff, if you're trying to kind of assess where you're at with this relationship, it says, moving beyond the constraints of the mind, freely and lovingly embrace new situations. And this is going to be important, too, if you're kind of stuck in one of those shitty situations where, like, you're just down on your luck a little bit. Like, the universe just kind of handed you this challenge. And so it's saying, you know what? Let's fully embrace it. We don't have electricity because we forgot to pay the bill and then we accidentally spent that money on something else. Um, let's see how much fun it would be to do everything by candlelight. Like, let's have fun that way. Let's pretend like we're pioneers. Like, let's be adventurous. Something dumb like that, okay? Now, what is the overall outcome for your relationship in the month of October? Oh, the cards are getting jumpies. They want to tell you something. Here we go. They're like, you know what? The overall outcome is that you are going to move towards 10 cups. You're going to go from 8 to 10. So whether that means that you are finding um, enthusiasm, like kind of trying to rev yourself up to leave your partner, or whether it's to change something for the better within the context of your relationship and make it 10. And, you know, go from 8 and force it to be 10 by both of you respecting each other, having these big conversations, and then um, making this effort that's that's the purpose of this month and they're like this isn't necessarily the month to, to decide to do it um but this is the month to think about it okay now they're saying if you're not entirely sure about the situation don't make a decision that's okay um and definitely don't bring other people in because they are going to maybe give you advice or kind of distract you from really thinking it through. So um, I wish you the best of luck. I don't think it's going to be the easiest October ever. However, I think it's a very important one in regards to the context of your love life in general moving forward. So love and light and see you next month. Bye.